Good afternoon, Holy Family. Before we begin Mass, please silence any electronic devices. And we have the following announcements. Today's readings are on page 304 in the Missal. Family Mass is this Wednesday, February 8th, 5.30, here at the St. Mary's campus. There is no class at 4.30 or 6.30 on Wednesday. Anointing of the sick will take place after Mass today. Please remain in the church if you'd like to be anointed. The St. Mary and the St. Vincent de Paul pantries will be having an egg drive next weekend, February 11th and 12th, after all Masses. <coughs> Excuse me. Please support their mission to feed the hungry by bringing a dozen eggs to donate. The Knights of Columbus will be hosting their pancake breakfast after the 10 o'clock Mass next weekend, February 12th. A free will offering will be accepted. And please join us for family game night on Saturday, February 18th at 6.30 p.m. at Father Williams Hall. You can see the bulletin or flack note for more information. Lent begins on February 22nd. Small groups are available. See the bulletin or flack note to sign up. And if you're interested in hosting a Lenten small group during Lent, or to read holy moments or another activity, please contact Father Mike. And now let us call to mind that we are in the presence of God. Lord, we ask you for the grace to celebrate this liturgy well. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you. in me arise and dispel all the darkness Christ in me arise with your power and your strength Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing Christ in me arise Christ in me arise Christ in me In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you.
Once again, we come to our Lord's table to be nourished, to be loved, and draw close to the heart of Christ. As we do this, let us be mindful of our need of God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away Keep your family safe, Lord, with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, share your bread with the hungry, shelter the oppressed and the homeless, clothe the naked when you see them, and do not turn your back on your own. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your wound shall be quickly healed. Your vindication shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, here I am. If you remove from your midst oppression, false accusation, and malicious speech, if you bestow your bread on the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then light shall rise for you in the darkness, and the gloom shall become for you like midday. The word of the Lord.
The just one is a light in the darkness, light for the upright. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and give freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. The just one is a light in the darkness, light for the upright. The just one is a light in the darkness, light. Just one is a light in the darkness, light for the upright. The just one is a light in the darkness, light for the upright. Their hearts are secure. On their foes, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. The just one is a light in the darkness. Just one is a light in the darkness, light for the upright. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we speak a wisdom to those who are mature, not a wisdom of this age, nor are the rulers of this age who are passing away. Rather, we speak God's wisdom, mysterious, hidden, which God predetermined before the ages for our glory, and which none of the rulers of this age knew, or if they had known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, what eye has not seen, an ear has not heard, and what has not entered the human heart, what God has prepared for those who love him, this God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit scrutinizes everything, even the depths of God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. 
are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, sometime in middle or late adulthood, many people feel the itch to ask some new questions about life. I'll share you some of mine. At my stage in life, what's so great about being a pretty good athlete? What's the big deal about having hair? <laughs> Who cares what I wear or how big my waistline is? When these prized and prized things lose their luster, and their potential, other annoying questions take their place. What's the point of my life? What's the difference between satisfaction and joy? Between achievement and vocation? Those questions, in a sense, are really the same and ask, what's really important in life? And then those questions weave themselves through all of our scriptures tonight. The reading from Isaiah finds Israel recently returned from captive slavery in a foreign land. And their big goal, goal their struggle right now, is to reclaim themselves as the chosen people. And to do that, there's a great deal of emphasis on strict following of rituals, worship, and sacrifices. And in spite of their efforts and the leaders' insistence on these things, they weren't fulfilling the hope they had as a captive nation. So they began talking about, let's have a national feat, uh, a national uh, fast and will reclaim who we are as God's chosen ones. In that question, or that thought, Isaiah enters. And he voices God's reaction to this proposal. Isaiah tells the people that nothing will change until they change. And Isaiah's instructions are striking. He tells us to share our bread with the hungry, to shelter and clothe those who are vulnerable in any way, and never turn our backs on our own. Isaiah is clearly saying that we need to treat everyone in need as one of our own, as our clan. 
as the people to whom we owe our first allegiance. With these changes, Isaiah says, Jerusalem will reestablish itself as the city of light, shining brightly for the rest of the world to see, to admire, and to imitate. Without these changes, darkness would continue and a veil would obscure the light. Paul, in a similar fashion, <clears throat> tells the Corinthians what it means that being the light has nothing to do with fancy words or intellectual acumen. It's simple. Being the light is as unpretentious and as challenging as living as Jesus did, simply for the good of others. And Paul's reflection leads us into Jesus' description of disciples as light and salt. This week, our readings are most, give us a most detailed description of what it means to be living lights to our world. And it doesn't take much to realize that these messages are meant for communities as much as they are for individuals. The community Isaiah wants to build, the community that we too are called to build, will truly bring a new dawn in our world. Isaiah, Isaiah tells us that when we treat another's need as our own, we create the kind of society that reflects the very glory and presence of God. In such a society, no cry for help can go unanswered. Not because God swoops in and takes care of the problem, but because the people of God live their, reflection, live their vocation to reflect and bring God's love. And this is exactly what Jesus is talking about when he tells his listeners that they are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Jesus knew the words of Isaiah. He prayed the Psalms. And he realized that neither salt nor light exist for themselves, but call attention and, and enhance other things. As salt and light, the people of God do not simply note the needs of others. They prove that by their activities that such needs can be addressed and alleviated. The light demonstrates the reign of God is real and a growing phenomenon in our world. And this brings us back to our own questions about our own lives. Isaiah, Paul, and Jesus want their people to live in joy, to have meaning in their lives. In short, we are invited by these scriptures to understand and find the fulfillment of our vocation as disciples and discovering what they were made for and how we can best use our gifts to fulfill them for the good of the world. That's the simple truth about why we were created. It brings to mind a story about St. Francis de Sales and how he responded to his world. Francis was part of a Catholic community that was consumed by the Protestant Reformation and the violent wars that resulted. There's a story of one pope a contemporary of Francis, who commented in regard to a couple thousand Protestants who had been captured. The Pope's response to that was, kill them, kill them all. Can't imagine a Pope saying that, or any person of faith saying that. Francis was the Bishop of Geneva, but unable to take up residence there because it was a Protestant stronghold. The Reformation created such animosity and violence that if Francis attempted to live in his own diocese in Geneva, he most likely would have been arrested and killed. 
His response, so different from that Pope's, was to develop a theology of nonviolence founded in the gospel. In a sermon he wrote, Francis states, it will be by charity that the walls of Geneva must be shaken, by charity that that city must be invaded, and by charity it must be recovered. May our camp be the camp of God, whose trumpets proclaim with accents all of gentleness. This song, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of armies. It is on this camp that you must fix your gaze and we will conquer only with prayer and love. <clears throat> this Sunday's readings and really the readings from now until Lent in a few weeks invite us to keep asking ourselves about the good life. What's our life for? What's it mean? What is the light that Christ calls us to be? How do we bring the reign of God into our midst? How to be light and salt? Like Francis de Sales, we are encouraged to fix our gaze on all that is in, in prayer and in love. You can begin today by asking yourself, when have you experienced real joy? When have you have found a sense of value in what you have done and who you are? You might be surprised how closely your answer is aligned with the type of activities Isaiah suggests and how much the actual experience of the reign of God in our midst comes when we live lives of love, when we reach out in the compassion and gentleness of Christ and bring the reign of God into the hearts of those around us and proclaim who we are as light, as salt. May God bless us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is spiritual. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from love, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one beautiful Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now as a people of faith, we turn to God with our needs. For God's holy people, that we glorify God by living as the church teaches, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For rulers, civil leaders, and journalists, that they speak and write the truth in all things, we pray. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, that they answer God's call to religious vocations and lay service in the church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are homeless, hungry, and unemployed, that they find shelter, food, and jobs, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all here present who help the poor, the hungry, and the sick, that they find joy and renewal in their ministry, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the names and prayers in our book of intentions, and for all the special intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. For the souls of all who have gone before us, we remember Venancia Garcia, who died recently. At this Mass, we also remember Manuel Gonzalez. Grant them eternal peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, we lift up to you all of our prayers today. As we live this week coming up, help us to seek what is true and honest in our lives as disciples. May we truly be light in this world. We make this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This past week, as you might know, was we celebrated the Feast of St. Blaise, and um, he was martyred. He was a bishop, and he is said to he have healed a boy of choking. Uh, it's an ancient tradition in our church to bless throats on his feast, so we'll do that now for those that choose to come forward. Um, when you come forward, it'll be just like communion, and. Uh, the person holding the candles to bless your throats will say a short prayer to which you respond, Amen. If you don't want to be touched or have the candles touch your throat, just cross your arms and uh, we'll do that uh, without the, the candles. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, may God deliver you from every disease of the throat and from every other illness in the name of
Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life. Be thou my wisdom, and thou my true word. I ever with thee, and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son. Thou in me dwelling, and I with thee. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou hold me first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou art. I, King of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself is your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim.
You indeed are holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like, like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Earl, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now we join together in the prayer Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share that with one another. Peace, Lynn. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, we offer the following prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We till the earth, we tend the ground, sowing hope and peace where none is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. We, we till the earth, we tend the ground, so when all is found in selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. As God provides our every need with grateful hearts, let us receive these gifts of love and make return. Till the earth we tend the ground, sowing hope and peace where none is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. All creatures share one common home. One loving God, one song of hope. The rocks cry out and praises ring. Rise up and sing, rise up and sing. We till the earth, we tend the ground. So we hope and peace when not is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. With open hand, our Lord has given His life for all that we might live. No greater love is there than this. No Till the earth we tend the ground, so we hope and peace when not is found. In selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. Where hardened hearts have turned to greed, trampling upon the fledgly seed. Help us to tend to others' needs. Open our eyes, open our eyes. We till the earth, we tend the ground. So we go. When none is found, it's self 
tremendous love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. On rocky paths and trodden roads, Lord, clear the ground where thorns have grown. Give us the grace to follow you. Make straight the way, make straight the way. We till the earth, we tend the ground. So we hope and peace when none is found. It's selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. It's selfless love, God's life abounds. We till the earth, we tend the ground. If there's anyone here that would uh, take is taking the Eucharist to the souls who can't be with here, please come forward. Well, may the Lord bless you as you visit those who cannot be with us. May your visit bring them comfort and be a sign of hope for them of Christ's presence in their lives and the concern and care of this community. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have willed that we be partakers of the one bread and the one chalice, grant us so to live that made one in Christ, we may bear joyfully the fruit of salvation and the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks to, you, Thanks God. to God.
sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Lord, your summons echoes true when you have called my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. Show the soul move and live and grow in you.